Hello and welcome guys. Update 4.1 is out, and with the last huge update as well, I thought it might be worth my while taking a really in-depth look into every weapon in the game and ranking its attachments so you guys know which attachments will potentially work better than others and when to swap out for other ones. I will add a quick disclaimer, attachments will also be a personal preference. That means that you might like a certain attachment better than another one. That's okay. Use what you feel most comfortable with. This video will focus on assault rifles. These are primarily used for spraying down on opponents at short to mid ranges, but may also be used as a cheap and effective DMR, sometimes outperforming DMRs depending on the attachments and personal preference of the weapons. Now I will advise you to watch the whole video, as you never know what weapon you might find on the battleground. But, here is a handy guide to see the attachments of the weapon you want to use. First, I'll explain how I ran each of the three tests, and how I collected the data. For reload speed, I grabbed all the magazine attachments the weapon could use, then I performed an empty reload and a half reload with each, including no attachment, and timed the animation until the rounds are loaded here. For spraying, I simply did the good old method of shooting up against a wall, without moving my mouse, and highlighted these points. For semi-auto, or tapping, I shot at a 50 meter target three times and pinpointed the start position, the maximum point, and the resting point, marking all of these. Starting from the top in alphabetical order then, the AKM. Personally, this is only ever used in a semi-auto when I have another weapon that will be less effective, like an SMG. Otherwise, this is my CQB weapon. I would almost never use it as a DMR, but some people like it, so let's test it. So these results were very shocking. No matter what magazine you have equipped, the weapon still reloads at exactly the same speed when empty, and only the quick draw and extended quick draw have got bonuses for a half reload. I imagine we might see a trend appear soon, and I have a strong feeling this is an oversight when PUBG Corp implemented the reload update for rounds being loaded quicker but did not compensate for the magazine bonuses. Let's wait and see. Onto the spray patterns for the AKM, and this comes as no surprise that without an attachment the vertical recoil is very high. However, in a surprising turn, the flash hider almost holds out against the compensator, so it isn't as bad as I thought. The suppressor is still throwing it off with no recoil bonus either. For these reasons, I would recommend the following spray rankings. Compensator, flash hider, suppressor, normal. For the AKM semi-auto tapping, it appears the flash hider is the most consistent, although tapping without an attachment was quite good too. The compensator and suppressor both having inconsistent horizontal bounces means that pulling the shot back to your target will be much harder. The semi-auto tapping rankings are as follows. Flash hider, normal, suppressor, compensator. Of course the suppressor would come first if you were using this for stealth. The AUG, probably one of my favourite weapons. I don't mind using this as a cheap DMR as it works quite well, but its main power comes from its minimal recoil, making it very easy to control while spraying. Back at the reload speed board we can see a similar result with the AUG. A full reload with any magazine is 2.1 seconds, but without is fractionally quicker. And again, the quick draw and extended quick draw half reloads are boosted as well. Here is where we can see the AUG shine. The vertical recoil is almost non-existent when compared with the AKM. Since I've made all of these to the same scale, it is easy to see how little effort is needed to control this weapon. 
The suppressor does push the vertical recoil a little higher though. My ranking stands at compensator, flash hider, normal, suppressor. For spraying with grips it is easy to see the vertical grip reducing recoil, but as the AUG already has very low recoil, I would personally use the half grip here as it gives a little vertical recoil reduction but also keeps the horizontal recoil in check a little more. The angle grip also coming in a close second. For obvious reasons you would never use a lightweight grip for spraying. My ranking here is half, angled, vertical, thumb, lightweight. Here is another easy tail. The compensator doesn't seem to affect the AUG as much as the AKM for semi-auto tapping, but it still doesn't beat the flash hider. Tapping without an attachment is also very centered, and of course the suppressor is for stealth and not the best for quick taps. Ranking is flash hider, normal, compensator, suppressor. For single fire, the AUG of course benefits from the low recoil, but the lightweight might still be a mid-range choice. Its high spread will make returning the reticle to your target a little tricky. Instead, consider the half grip or vertical grips again. Ranking for tapping, vertical, half, lightweight, angled, thumb. The barrel, an absolute monster of an assault rifle. I do everything I can to use this in close quarters exclusively. Unless I have no other option, I do not use it as a DMR. Let's have a look at the data. Looking at the reload speed data, we are seeing that trend I mentioned at the AKM. A full reload still takes the same amount of time. As expected, the quick draw and the extended quick draw give the bonus on a half reload though. Now we move on to the spraying. The barrel is notoriously difficult to control as it has the highest recoil in the game. So high in fact that very few of these spray patterns actually have all 30 bullets, some of them just went too high. Oddly enough here, the only attachment that seems to have any effect is the compensator. The flash hider having some effect, but not as close as the previous weapons. From these tests, I would rank compensator, flash hider, normal, suppressor. Anyway, as can be seen, the vertical grip is the best for reducing vertical recoil. The only grip that really presents any horizontal recoil is the lightweight, which you would never use for spraying. The half grip is also viable as an option, although I would prefer the vertical grip on this AR. My ranking stand at vertical, half, thumb, angled, lightweight. This is the only graph I have had to scale down for comparison. Here is the original. The barrel for semi-auto tapping is not a recommendation of mine, however sometimes it does need to happen, so let's investigate. The compensator here seemed to pull the best results as the flash hider has quite a spread. This is likely due to the natural recoil of the barrel being so high. With the suppressor in first place for stealth, my ranking here would have to be compensator, flash hider, normal, suppressor. Attaching a grip makes a lot of difference. The lightweight seems to have a solid lead and the vertical bringing in a good contest but still with some spread. My advice here is to use lightweight, vertical, thumb, half, angled. The G36, a very common assault rifle to see in many games and while only currently available on Vikendi, let's hope that changes, this weapon is incredibly fun to use. Its slightly high recoil among the 5.56 assault rifles means that it demands more skill to use efficiently.
So looking at these numbers, we can see the G36C has a lengthy reload speed. The only time it drops below 2 seconds is on a half reload with a quicker extended quick draw reload. Otherwise, we're seeing the same repeated issues save for the full reloads are also seeing a small improvement in reload speed for this weapon and so far, this weapon alone. Given the difference between half reloads though, I feel the full reload should also see a bigger boost. With the G36C, the barrel attachments have a varying degree of results. We see the suppressor kick the vertical recoil up ever so slightly, but once again we see the return of the flash hider's usefulness in spray tactics. Of course the compensator wins this one. Ranking is compensator, flash hider, normal, suppressor. Checking out the grips, the impressive thing here is how competitive the half grip is. In fact, I'd prefer it over the vertical for the horizontal recoil reduction and its vertical control being on par with the vertical grip. Otherwise, the angled seems to have a moment of veering off course, but the other three are relatively similar to each other. Ranking is half, vertical, thumb, angled, lightweight. Let's take a look at the G36C for semi-auto. While some of the attachments like the flash hider and suppressor show a few signs of horizontal shifting, there's not much difference among these. However, the consistency of the shots without an attachment is impressive and very uniform. My ranking here is normal, compensator, flash hider, suppressor. Onto the grips, and it is close at points. The vertical seems to have an edge only from straying less on the resting position over the lightweight. The angled also performing surprisingly well. My ranking here is vertical, lightweight, thumb, angled, half. Graza, a rather unused bullpup assault rifle with a built-in grip. Unique in the fact that it can only accept a suppressor along with magazine attachments. This weapon is still capable of holding its own in battle. Very similar results yet again. The quick draw is pulling better half reloads, but no changes in any other way. You'd expect the extended to take slightly longer as loading 10 more rounds, but this isn't the case. For full auto spraying, we compare the only attachment the Glazer can accept, the suppressor. It seems to affect horizontal recoil negatively, but it does sound very good in game. Despite this, my ranking is still normal suppressor. Tapping with the Glazer seems to be a different story, as without the suppressor it seems to struggle a lot with large amounts of pull to the right. I rank this section as suppressor normal. Let's take a look at the M16A4, the classic semi-auto and burst fire assault rifle. Primarily used as a cheap but effective DMR, this weapon can be deadly when used up close as well. While we see some very small variety in the reload speeds for the M16A4, there really isn't any major changes. The quick draws don't give a bonus, even on the half reloads. Looking at these results, a quick draw magazine isn't even worth considering, and the two extended mags are pretty much on par. Considering the M16A4 cannot spray in full auto, I simulated what a full auto spray would be like using burst fire rapidly. The compensator certainly had some effect, bringing the vertical recoil down quite a lot. However, again, the flash hider wins my vote as it controls horizontal recoil a little more, and this counts for a lot.
The M16A4 can also use a stock, which will assist in recoil and stability. Attachment ranking is flash hider, compensator, normal, suppressor. For semi-auto, the M16A4 shines. Since you can use a stock as well, this only improves the control. The flash hider here gets my vote, although the suppressor with its scattered horizontal hits isn't the worst of the guns we've seen, especially for stealth. Semi-auto ranks are flash hider, compensator, suppressor, normal. Alright, let's get to it. After six other assault rifles, let's look at the weapon everyone is here to see. Well, almost everyone. The M416. Probably the most versatile assault rifle in the game. Excellent at spraying, equally great as a cheap DMR. But what does the data reveal? Here's yet another surprise, or not at this point, considering previous results. The M416's reload speeds are almost unaffected by the magazine attachments. This means that using a quick draw over no attachment yields absolutely no benefits. Likewise, an extended over an extended quick draw makes no difference. So at least we can stop hunting for an extended quick draw now we know it makes no difference. Not even the half reloads benefit from any of the bonuses that are meant to be given by the attachments. Well, this was one of the only non-surprises we knew was coming. The compensator doing fantastic, but yielding a very small amount of horizontal offset. And again, the flash hider really is a very good attachment for recoil control, so don't pass it up. The suppressor also keeping things surprisingly tight with almost no horizontal recoil. The M416 also capable of using a stock means you can further reduce these patterns if you can find one. Considering that controlling vertical recoil here is easier than horizontal sway, I would actually rank these attachments flash hider, compensator, suppressor, normal. Spraying with the M416 is an essential skill, and a grip makes that a lot easier. I think if you watched the other guns you knew the half grip was going to win this, the vertical yielding to some horizontal sway, and the other three grips all very close together. Here are my ranks. Half, vertical, angled, thumb, lightweight. Let's move on to the M416 on semi-auto. We can see the stock bringing in some good bonuses considering that without any attachments the weapon has good control. As for muzzles, the flash hider and suppressor are very closely matched, although the suppressor has more consistent placement for the height and resting points, which means it will be easier to predict. I have to rank this section suppressor, normal, flash hider, compensator. Now let's look at the grips. The lightweight takes the win here, followed closely by the vertical, which only lost out from the small offset in resting place. I will be careful with an angled or thumb, as they seem to have a lot of inconsistency. Ranks are lightweight, vertical, half, thumb, angled. The not so commonly used semi and burst fire mutant. I actually quite enjoy using this weapon. Let's look at the data. Again we see some very confusing results, there is no point in using a quick draw magazine as it has no benefits, and the extended quick draw also serving no purpose, so with the mutant we can also settle for an extended with no penalty. The compensator starts off giving a great bonus, and of course the flash hider has excellent recoil control as well. The suppressor here, however, climbs the tree quite a bit, and with the mutant only shooting 20 rounds I would certainly avoid this. 
since it can also accept a stock, this will benefit slightly as well. Ranking is Compensator, Flash Hider, Normal, Suppressor. For spraying grips, the vertical and half are at the top. They're pretty much on par with each other. The thumb has slightly better recoil control than the angled, but the angled can keep things tighter. Ranks are Vertical, Half, Angled, Thumb, Lightweight. On to using the Mutant as a DMR, and the suppressor looks very good for keeping things close together. The flash height is straying a little on the maximum height. Keeping a stock will also reduce the maximum height quite nicely here. My rank is Suppressor, Flash Hider, Compensator, Normal. Finally, the grips for semi-auto on the Mutant, and the lightweight is quite far ahead. The vertical having some horizontal sway is close behind, but the angled remaining so consistent is also very interesting. The half grip and thumb grip both swaying a lot will make consistent shots difficult. The ranks stand at lightweight, vertical, angled, half, thumb. We now take a look at another bullpup assault rifle. This one is exclusive to Sanok. The QBZ is very versatile, but for me, is the only 5.56 assault rifle that I try not to use as a DMR. Let's take a look. Here we see the same trend as before, however the quick jaws again have an upper hand on the half reload. A regular half reload still taking longer than a full empty reload. Onto a full auto spray down with the QBZ, and since it has a slower rate of fire, it's easier to control. The suppressor holding a very tight but vertical recoil pattern. This should be easy to control, but the flash hider here seems to work best. The lack of almost any horizontal spray means it will be more consistent at remaining on the target and not jump off. My ranking here is flash hider, compensator, suppressor, normal. The QBZ can also use grips, and the half seems like the better one to use, although a vertical has excellent recoil control with just a little bit of sway. The angle grip also holds a very tight spread which is impressive, but it needs more recoil compensation in pulling down since it has no vertical bonuses. The lightweight losing out to the thumb grip, which also seems to pull to the right. I rank these attachments as half, vertical, angled, thumb, lightweight. Here we can see the QBZ is a difficult weapon to tap with. The Compensator now seems to be the best attachment for semi-auto on the QBZ. The Flash Hider having some wild variation on the resting places, and the Suppressor feeling slightly more consistent. Ranks for semi-auto are Compensator, Suppressor, Flash Hider, Normal. This is a difficult one. For the sheer speed of being able to shoot, the Lightweight does an excellent job, but we'll need some patience like almost all other grips with realigning your shot. The vertical with slightly higher but more consistent bounce is also a great choice. The angled again giving some very good recoil control and having the most uniform pattern here. Ranks are lightweight, vertical, angled, thumb, half. Finally we come to the scar. Found only on Erangel and Miramar this assault rifle blends a lot of things very nicely together. But no weapon is beyond testing, so here we go. For the last time on the assault rifles we can see very small changes in the reload speed. The extended actually beating the extended quick draw in a full reload by about four hundredths of a second. For the SCAR, the magazine only matters if you need ten extra rounds, otherwise it doesn't matter what you use. As with the other 5.56 ARs we can see good results on the board. 
The compensator giving the edge over the flash hider, which has a little more horizontal bounce after about 15 rounds. The suppressor keeping things nice and tidy with good horizontal control. Ranks for muzzle attachments are compensator, flash hider, suppressor, normal. Onto the grips of spraying full auto, and there is a surprising amount of heavy horizontal sway. The vertical seems to keep it in check the most, followed by the half grip. Oddly, the thumb grip also coming in with the angled as the better grips here for horizontal recoil management. I will rank these as vertical, angled, thumb, half, lightweight. Using a scar as a cheap DMR is a normal practice. The compensator has this in the bag with almost no inconsistencies. The suppressor also giving some good feedback, but using a flash hider doesn't look worth it over no attachment. My ranking is compensator, suppressor, normal, flash hider. And finally to the semi-auto grips for the scar. The lightweight actually bounces quite hard and the vertical performs better. The half grip gives some good recoil control and equally impressive consistent resting spots. My ranking here is vertical, half, lightweight, thumb, angled. So after all that research, here is a little spraying cheat sheet for the muzzle and grip attachments. I've made these for the 556 and the 762 rifles, so you can be sure to know what to use and when. And of course there is one for semi-auto tapping, 556 and 762. I really hope this video helped you understand the assault rifles of PUBG better. I put far too many hours into the research and editing of this video. Take your newfound knowledge and get into the battlegrounds. Get some kills, rack up those challenges and take home some chicken dinners. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.